A new book explores the impact artificial intelligence will have on education and how this new technology will transform learning. It's called Brave New Words, How AI Will Revolutionize Education and Why That's a Good Thing. Author Sal Khan is the founder of Khan Academy, a nonprofit that provides free education for anyone. And he joins us this morning. Good morning. Morning. I think uh, people are very nervous about AI. Um, why do you think that there is a benefit for the future in terms of education? Yeah, and to be clear, I, I don't think that there's it, there's all upside. There's definitely some scary things about AI. We're going to see more fraud, more deep fakes, et cetera. But what, what I try to point out in the book is a technology like AI it amplifies human intent. And there's going to be bad actors doing bad things, but there's a lot of opportunity for good folks to do good things with it, and especially in education. And what we see it as... Uh, it could provide more tu personalization, tutoring for any student, if you will, and also support teachers. Teachers spend a ton of time doing things like writing lesson plans, grading papers, writing progress reports. If it can give them a little bit more time back to themselves, it can be a real, a real benefit. So you founded Khan Academy back in uh, the mid-2000s, and that's like videos that everyone can find online. It's a nonprofit, you, you know, anything. You learn math equations, anything. And how does this apply to what you do? You have people teaching in those videos. Now, would you apply AI to those? Yeah, in a lot of the videos, it's me teaching. Yeah. Uh, some folks know that this this all got started uh, almost 20 years ago. I started tutoring one cousin remotely, and then word spreads in my family, free tutoring is going on before I know it, I'm tutoring <laughs> 10, 15 cousins around the country. And, and, and a lot of what I was doing then, I started writing software for them so they could get more practice, so that I, as their tutor or their teacher, could keep track of where they were. Then I started making YouTube videos. Those took on a life of their own. But if you think about everything that's happened to Khan Academy since then, it's not much more than me. We have over 160 million registered users. We're in pretty much every country in the world. We're in 50 plus languages. It's all about trying to scale that type of personalization that I was able to do 20 years ago for Navia, my, at the time, 12 year old, 12 year old cousin. And what the power of what we're seeing generative AI, and we've launched a generative AI on Khan Academy called Conmigo, where yes, you can still watch videos, you can still get personalized practice, but now if you have a question, you can go further. If you want to talk to an AI simulation of a literary character, you can do that. If you want, uh, if you, if you, if you're a little bit blocked on a certain concept on an exercise, you can get that support. And on the teacher and the parent side, now they can talk to the AI really as a teaching assistant to understand how they can support their students better. But isn't the key to learning uh, to learn how to learn as opposed to AI giving you the answer? How do you find that? How do you make that work? Absolutely. And, and once again, uh, it can be an amplification of intent. And if someone is trying to cut, do shortcuts, and it's pretty obvious, some forms of the AI you could use to cheat. What we're doing on Conmigo and what I advocate for in the book is you got to put guardrails on it. If you go to Conmigo and try to cheat, it won't. Uh, it'll say, hey, I'm here to support you. And if you write, for example, a teacher could assign an essay through it, it will support you through that, give you feedback, won't write it for you. And then when it reports back to the teacher, if you went to chat GPT or you got your older sister to write that essay, our AI will actually tell the teacher, hey, I don't know where this essay came from. It's not consistent with Sal's other writing. You should look into that. So we think that, yes, in certain cases, it could be used to cheat, but in other cases, it could be used to police the cheating, not just even AI cheating, all forms of cheating, and it can be used to better support the teacher and the student. Right. In, in the meantime, there's this seems to be this gap where students know how to go on the computer to use uh, parts of AI to write papers, and maybe the teachers and professors haven't caught up with that yet and can't detect something written by someone else. So where does that gap get filled? That's exactly right. And unlike other things in education technology in the past that felt like nice to have, what you're seeing in higher ed and in high schools and other places, because of what you just described, it's a bit of an emergency. A lot of degree programs are based on writing papers. And if you don't know right. who's writing the paper anymore, uh, can you give the degree? And so this is why we are working with school districts, why we're working with higher ed, so that we can give that transparency to the faculty of what the students are doing. And if they were to go use another AI tool that does not have the guardrails, how we can help support police that because uh, the, once again, it'll say, hey, this isn't consistent with Sal's writing in class. Uh, he, we didn't work on this together. We, the AI and Sal, he got it from someplace else. Uh, we should double click on that. All right, well, Sal, the book is uh, Brave New Worlds, How AI Will Revolutionize Education and Why That's a Good Thing. You can get more at khanacademy.org or follow Sal on X. Thank you so Thanks, much Sal. for being with us.
Thanks for having me.